So far, so good. For for me, not for everyone. Please cheat. Look at uh, somebody else's computer. It's okay. Yes. It worked. It didn't work. No, it should work. The first time you said load fast, it was opening up. Yeah. yeah. It's absolutely weird echo. Okay, so this is what I did. <coughs> Notepad hello world.py so it opens up Notepad. And I write my code because I only have one screen. Uh, you, it, should, it should be saved in this folder. In C, user demo. You would see your folder. You know, you know the, yes. Do the best way to learn is to ask. If you do not have anybody in person to ask, just ask Google. That's how I learned programming. I have a saying. It, it's only my saying. In Urdu, actually in Punjabi, I say "Utte thale Google." Utte Allah thale Google, which means is in the skies you have God on uh, Allah, and on earth you have Google. So, first pray and then search it on Google. If you don't find it, keep praying. Someday you will, inshallah. Anyways, uh, jokes aside, bad jokes aside. Uh, are we, are we, do, so everybody follows, right? This is not, this is not too complicated? Kind of. Kind of? Okay, then you're, then sir, you're in deep trouble. No, I'm kidding. Your dad can personally go with you on, on all of these things, inshallah. Okay, so now what we accomplished so far is we wrote hello world on Python interpreter and we made a file called hello world.py that's our first python program congratulations <laughs> alhamdulillah um and to run that program we basically type python and the name of the program file that's it now we're going to move on to some advanced stuff not really advanced um but hopefully so let's come back to the python interpreter open it type python press enter Yes. The file which I have saved now have to be in the same directory of my yes. or I have to be okay. You have to CD into that directory. Okay. But you, if you typed in notepad hello world.py and then saved it, then it should be in the same directory. Okay. Inshallah. Um, so let's move on. Now we, we, we entered, we, just, just remember we supplied something to print function over there. I, I'm calling it a function. I'm, the reason I'm calling it a function is that it does something. It performs something, right? Does an action. So I call it a function. So print function took a, some information, some data. Another word for information in computers is we call it data for some reason. Uh, data is actually plural, singular. It's datum, I guess. I don't know for sure. Or datum, whatever. Um, so data. Data is text words, letters, numbers, um, and some, some other forms of data that only computers can understand. It's called binary data, hexamal, hex hexadecimal data. Don't worry about that. We, we, we de we'll deal with words and numbers today. Um, so you, when you have a computer program, it usually does something. And what it does is basically it's it goes through a sequence of commands and does something. For instance, uh, if one writes a program to calculate, say, my average grade, so what I'll do is, that program should do is, it, it should take my grades for the different tests in my semester or year and add, add them up and divide it to take an average, right? So it has to do some discrete steps, one after the other. That sequence of steps is called statements. And coding programming involves four or five different things only. 
no matter what language it is, uh, usually there, there's a family of languages called iterative languages, just forget that for now. But mostly in programming, we only do four or five things. One, we, we write statements, one after the other, sequence of commands. Two, we have conditions. If this happens, then do this. If my mic is turned on, then I'll start speaking. Well, I'll speak anyways, but something like that. If there is Adan, I will start praying. So that's conditions. And the third thing is loops. Loops is repetitions when you want to do something again and again. For instance, uh, there's a program that takes wants to calculate my average grade. It will keep asking, uh, give me another grade, give me another grade. I will enter, keep entering numbers and numbers, and it'll say, you know, when I say end, it should stop. So that's a loop. Goes over and over and over the repetitions. We'll go through the code, we'll go through different examples. Don't worry about it. This was the set, third thing. Fourth is function calls, uh, or writing functions, I would say. So that print function, it does something, but somebody wrote that piece of code to make that possible. That function calls writing a set of functions, putting basically a group of code into one block and that you can just use that block again and again. That's basically what a function is. Writing functions and structuring it in some file, that's part four. And the fifth part is actually, I forgot. No, actually, no, I remember. Classes and inheritance and data types. Forget the, forget the four, uh, fifth part, but until the fourth part is, uh, sorry, what? Classes and abstract data types, which is classes really. So you have statements, you have conditions, you have loops, and you have method calls. That's it. That's it. That's how all programming languages basically work. Yeah, there are some, some extra things, bits and pieces, and some languages provide different functionalities, but the crux is the same. If you know how to do all of these four things in a particular one particular language, you can basically learn a new, new language in two, three hours and know how to do these four things in that particular language. So some of you have experience in Java or C or C++. That would come in handy today. And you will see that Python is very simple. Yes? Can I what? How do you enlarge the text? Which text? Notepad? No, command prompt. Command prompt. Well, I probably should not stop for such questions because we only have sorry limited time. But go to properties font and then you can increase the font. You can do that later. <laughs> so moving on. Um, this hello world, this piece of information, I can put it in a place that where, where I can you know store it somewhere. To store it somewhere, we call that thing variables. Let me show you what that means. It's easier to show. So, oh, that's a bad way to show. Let me just do it so that you can see. Oh. Okay. Can everybody see this last line? I hope so. <laughs> All right. So I'm saying that my Hello equals to, people remember basic mathematics, equal to sign means you assign some value to something. In mathematics we have variables too, but those are slightly different, more complicated, these are easier. So I want to store hello world in this hello thing over here. Think of it as a bucket of things. You can put different pieces of information in this bucket. Right, right now this bucket, this variable, has hello world in it. Let's supply this to print function. You see what happened? I can store my text, my piece of information in hello, that is a variable, and I can supply it to a function and print hello world. I can do the same thing with that. And the reason it is called a variable, because it can vary, you can enter, hello, dunya, dunya in Urdu is world. So I'll execute the same command. See, a variable can hold data and you can change the value of it. 
We call it the value of the variable. Yes. Uh-huh. Should I what? So after I'm done doing that hello and says hello world, mm -hmm. what should I do? And press enter. <laughs> yeah, so, sorry. Uh, it, it's, it's an assumed thing that you press enter after commands. Okay, so people have an idea about variables and you can store numbers into the, in them too. So hello can be one, two, three. I'll type the same command. I'll move my mouse over so you can see. See, how cool is that? So you can have different kinds of, you can have numbers, you can have tags, you can have other things which we will talk about later on, inshallah. So, moving on. So far, so good. So far, so good. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Um, let's start with strings. Oh, by the way, this, this text is not called text. I should call it a sentence. But in English, we have sentence fully formed sentences which have grammar in it. This is just information, right? It could be anything. One, two, three, hello world, blah, blah, blah. It could be anything. So we cannot call it a sentence. In this quotes is called a string. This is called a string. I don't know who came up with that name, but it's called a string. Just rem remember that. Um, whenever you put something in quotes, you put words in it, and it's called a string. And there are different operations can, you can perform on strings. So in mathematics, you can add two numbers. Two plus two equals to five. Correct? Correct? Two plus two equals four. That's crazy mathematics. <laughs> we'll do we'll do something like that. We'll do we will write a class. We'll write some piece of code that will do crazy mathematics. Like two plus two equals to five. Never mind. Anyways, two plus three equals to four. Usually. So. In, in, in we can add strings too. But what does it mean to add two text, two pieces of information like hello and word? What does that mean? Let's see what that means. And another best way, well actually, they're, they're not two best ways. Well, for, for me, it's two best ways to do, learn things is to try them out too. First, look them up on Google. If you don't find them, or you find them, just try them out. So I'll try and see what happens. Ooh, interesting. So what happened? Aha. Uh -huh. See, we have a smart brother over here who said concatenation. Fancy words, huh? Uh, Basically, uh, we, we combine, when you use the add operator, I mean, trying to use this language, this lingo, operator, like we have in mathematics. When you use the add operator on two strings, or two or more strings, they basically join together those two strings. Another word, the, the technical word in programming language world is concatenation. You basically combine, join two words together. Okay. Um, so we have hello world. I'm going to do more things. Okay, hello world. Welcome to MIC. Yay. Cool. Alhamdulillah. So you can do concatenation. Yeah, you can add comma too. So with my third, this is very creepy, this microphone. Anyways, my third string starts with a comma. You can do that. This is part of text. Like you type something in Word, you can type a comma. Yeah. Sure. But if, but if but if what if you want to add a co double quotes? Yes. Good question. Thank you. So if I add another double quote, let's add a quote and see what happens. Bam, bam, bam. Syntax error. Syntax. Well, first of all, syntax means. What does it mean, really? I don't know. Syntax is uh, can be is ap applicable on all different languages. For instance, uh, yeah, right. Yeah, it's kind of like more like the style, acceptable style of the programming language. What it under understands. So this programming language understands that in two quotes you have text, but if you, and with an, to use an operator you need operands, which can be you know joined together with an operator. Here, what the problem was, it says syntax error because this code separated, the string ended here, and this is basically unknown thing for the, for the compiler or interpreter in this case. So to include this, but I want to include it in my text, right? I wanted to display it. So for the sake of doing it, we have a shortcut in many programming languages, including Python, to add a backslash before it. Boom. 
Now, who's smarter here? Never mind, it's me. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. So, a smarter person we should ask, how do you include a backslash now? Because backslash means whatever comes after backslash should be displayed instead, right? So to include a backslash, you include another backslash before it. I know, I know it's kind of silly, but it works. Well, actually, no. <laughs> you include the... Oh, that's interesting. That is very interesting. That is very interesting. Somehow, I don't know how to put a backslash in there. Yeah, I don't know. That's amazing. I don't know how to put a backslash. I'll learn that. See, that's why I say I'm still a student. I don't know. But anyways. I don't know. If I try try to enter a backslash, it's just two backslashes. It makes no sense at all. Anyways. Python, you don't like me anymore. I, I guess there, there should be something in there that I'm missing. But let's do that for That's an exercise for us. Go home, search Google, how to put a backslash in Python in a string and how to print it out. Inshallah. If I find something, I'll email you guys. All right. So there's another thing. Uh, string is also called an array. Now, what is that? Yeah, in mathematics you have arrays, in other, uh, you see, array notation. So array is basically a sequence of numbers, usually, but it can be characters too. So in this word, we have different characters. You join them together, you call them a string, right? String in string means like a thread or something. I don't know, that, that's how maybe they got the name. But you can access those individual characters in the string. The way to do that is to... Right, hello, what was hello? Okay, never mind. Ah. First, let me put it in a variable. Okay. Hello, I'll put in two brackets. These are square brackets, I guess. Yes, square brackets. There are curly brackets too. So these square brackets allow me to specify the position, the character at the position at one at particular position that I want. So I want what? Well, A, S, D. Let's go with D. I want the third character. Let's see what I get. Whoops, I got an A. Basically, that's a bad example. Let me do this. Because I have repetition in there. All right. Let's do hello three. I wanted the third character. What happened? Anybody? Starts with zero. See, I, interesting. I have intelligent people over here who know programming. So. Arrays are basically, these, this string is an array of, a sequence of characters joined together and put in a one, one variable and I can access each individual item in that list, which is our array here. And I can supply a number saying, and this start, counting starts at zero. Don't ask me why, it has to do with binary numbers. For some reason it starts with zero and we're used to it. I put a hello, so three, Third position would be two, three minus one. Let me do that here. This is easier, or two. Excuse me. Okay, so hello of two is C. Now, I can do more interesting things. I can take a slice out of this. For instance, I only want A, B, and C. So what I'll do is, I'll type zero, put a colon, and type two. This row actually should be up till three. So anything bef starting from the first number, before the number of the second, the second, uh, you could say parameter over there, the second number, before the second number. So A, B, and C, zero to three. This is called slicing. And this functionality is available in other languages, but in a very weird fashion. In Python, it's very simple. Anyways, um, let's do one more thing. We have hello. We applied plus operator on hello, right? There is another mathematical operator in Python which is called exponential. For instance, I have two numbers. Two to raise to the power two is what? Four? Two raised to the power two is four. Okay. 
In Python, if you want to have an exponential, exponential operator in there, you type it with two stars. Let's see if I'm right. <laughs> yes, thank you. No surprises here. So you can do that. Two into two raised to power two is four. Let's do it with strings. Let's see what happens. Aha, uh -huh. it's not supported. Come on, it is supported. Okay, never mind. Maybe in Python 3 it's not supported. Just ignore that. Anyways, let's get back to hello. That's why I said I probably don't know all of the things. In Python 2, this, this results in hello and then, sorry, ABCD and then another ABCD. So it kind of combines, the, rep, repeats the string. But in Python 3, they removed it. I don't know why. Anyways, moving on. You can also do interesting thing. Remember arrays? Arrays is like sequence of data, characters, numbers. So let's do another string. Okay. Hello, comma, world. I can do in something very interesting. Uh, I can say AR for array equals to hello dot split and I can say I'll, I'll tell you what split means in Python if you type the name of the variable and press enter it shows you the value so what happened here what happened here is that I typed the name of the variable now since it is a string string has some valid operations that we can perform on it before this, we did concatenation, which was the plus sign. If you do string dot split with a comma, it will separate words in that string by, by you know, separate them by comma and put them in a list. That list, again, is a, an array. You, cannot, you can call it a list and an array. I would rather go with, a, with list. List is easy to understand in English. So that's a list. In Python, when you... Uh, print out a list, this is what happens. It shows you in those, I mean, it displays in those square brackets uh, along with a comma between saying that, you know, these are two words, strings that are part of that array list. So far, so good. What if it's uh, separated by, um, you know, some other symbol rather than, you know, comma? Okay, let's do that. Let's do this. So hello world is separated by this character. I don't know their name. And I try to split it by comma. What happens afterwards? It did not split. But you, uh, let me get to your question. That wasn't your question though. If you try to separate it with, the, with a different character, split it with a different character, since there is that character does not exist, it returns it that same string again. So what it will do is, since we don't have the, that character in there, so without that character, the first string before that character is the same string. Does that make any sense? Does that make any sense? So hello world, there's there was no tilde. No, I don't I don't remember what the name of that character is. But anyways, that character wasn't there. Sorry, comma wasn't there. And it is Python. What it tries to do is anything before the comma should be the first item in the list. So everything was before the comma because comma did not exist. So it will put that the entire string into a list and give it back to us. So we got the hello world. Now we're going to do is something. Exactly, we'll, we'll do that, inshallah. First, let's split it with that. Now, so far so good. Let, let me put three different things in there. So hello world, MIC. Good, okay. I don't know why I'm I came up, I come up with bad examples. Anyways, see? So it just replaces wherever the Yep. Yep. Replaces that character, basically splits the string at those position, positions where it sees that character, takes all of the different strings, resulting strings, puts them in a list and gives them back to you. You have this functionality in different languages. Java, JavaScript, C plus plus I guess in Perl and so on and so forth there are so many others anyways let's move on so th this is a very very handy operator the split function so um, another thing that we another subtlety that nobody asked about 
we did hello dot split for those who are new to programming whenever we want to uh, to perform a function on something we do a dot and the name of the function so object dot name of the function in this case let me go to notepad no, oh sorry notepad does not exist in Python okay so object dot there's no space so function and then the parameters we want to give to that function so this function whatever the name is in this case it's split is applied on this object or item or whatever or a variable let's call it a variable for now you can call a function on a variable our variable was hello so I'm trying to split hello with a is a what comma okay so far so good this is this this notation would come in handy later on when we do modules and write functions inshallah okay oh we didn't talk about new lines for instance I want to put a new like if I want to have hello on one line and world on a different line I would do uh, what I would do is backslash n this stands for new line. Um, in, a, in some other technical lingo, it's called carriage return and new line on Windows. And never mind. Just call it new line for now. And, oops. Ah, I have to print. Thank you. Yep. Yep. For printing backslash. Oh, yeah, okay. Really? Awesome. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Jazakallah khair. Okay. So, as the brother said, let's try that. Whenever we want to see something, we try it. Let's try it too. And Alhamdulillah, that works. So, yeah, I was right, but I needed to use it in print function rather than just putting it out there in command prompt. Okay. So, so far, so good. So far, so good. We're still going through the basics, and we're spending so much time on basics. That's f that's okay with me. So far, we saw numbers. Actually, we didn't really see numbers. Three is three. Three into four is twelve. Three divided by two is one point five. So we have different operations on numbers. Just wanted to put it put it out there for you. We worked on strings and numbers. There's another data type. I just used a new word, data type. You know it from different programming languages, but for those who are new to programming, the way we represent information, the way a language understands information is by categorizing it in different types. One is string, which is words. Two is numbers. And three is there are different kinds of numbers, floating point numbers, numbers with decimal points. And then there are booleans. True, false, something that is true or false, because that's some logical information that we can represent in a language, in code. The reason they're called Boolean comes from mathematics. Who, there was this, this mathematician named some, his last name was Bool, I guess. Does anybody know? I just said Bool, come on. Don't say Mr. Bool, he, he had a first oh, yeah, name too. Mr. Bool. Mr. Bool, let's call him Mr. Bool for now. I think it was George Bool or something. George Bull, right? Okay. George Bull. Thank you, George. Could have said George. Why Bull? I don't know. It's a funny name. Bull. Uh, anyways. So, Booleans can be true or they can be false. Simple. False is false. True is true. And let's put it in a variable. So, what is hello? Hello is true. True and false and that's it. Um... Can something be true and false at the same time? No. Do you want to try it out? Yeah. Let's try it out. True and false. False, no. <laughs> something can be true or false. Oh, wait, 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 my bad. What if I say something is true or false? Is it, it's, it's either raining or it's not raining. You would say, true, right? False. 
It's either raining or it's not raining. Is there a third state? Is there a third thing that I can say? No. It's raining and it's not raining at the same time. Boom. True or false is equal to true. True. Okay. False and false. False. False or false. False or false. True. Do you want to try it out? False. Okay, these are called expressions. These are operations on booleans. Remember, we did, we had a we had a uh, addition operator on numbers and addition operator on strings. Booleans have or and and operators. Nobody noticed this subtlety I put in there. And and or. You can say it's something and something, something or something, and the result is always not a number, not a string. It's a boolean. Does that make sense? Okay, alhamdulillah. This will come, we'll, we'll heavily use this later on, inshallah, today. All right, let's move to the sixth topic today. The first was installing Python, second was Hello World, third was, third was working with numbers, then variables, then strings. How the date works? Date works. Date works, interesting, good question. Date works as an object. There's no basic data type for date, usually in any language. You have a separate custom data type. We'll talk about the custom data types, inshallah, if we have time. Uh, I want to go back to lists. Remember arrays, string was inherited, uh, inheritantly, inherently, yes, uh, a list. So you can have a list of numbers too. So a list of numbers would be one, two, three, four, five, six. You normally write it like that on a piece of paper, right? In English or something, in any language. You separate them, them with commas. Same with Python. You separate different items in a list with commas. And you surround them with square brackets. Okay. I press enter. So Python is saying basically you gave me a list. So I got a list. And I can put it. Excuse me. I can put it in a variable. Let's see. Okay. What do we remember from lists before? There was this one thing we could do with lists. Anybody? Yeah. Sisters? Split. 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 Uh huh. Yeah. No. <laughs> yes. Well, that was but string. Yes. Uh, lists are arrays, and what can we do with arrays? We can. Display uh, the index value. Exactly. We can access their items. So we can access individual items. So I can do hello. Starts with zero, so the position number three would be three in this case, but that's index number. We call it index, by the way, for some reason. That position, I will still call it position, let's not call it index. Position, third position is two. Zero, one, two. That is a three. How is it a three? Yeah. Uh, let, let, let me make it easier for you. A. B, C. Let's store it in an, a different variable called ARR. We can have as many uh, variables as we like. So what's the third? You want to access the third item. Zero, one, two. It's not a three anymore, it's C. So the third item in the list was called three. So that's why so it was so confusing. The third item in the list should, could have, should be accessed by saying two, but it's a three. I know that's like woof, weird. I know, it's okay. You know that's how programmers make a lot of mistakes, because they expect number three. They when they de try to debug their program, they see they see third three on the third position by accessing two. They're like, what's going on? It should be three on three. What's going on? So what's happening? So that's one of the common mistakes I make. Yeah, I need I need to wear another set of glasses. Anyways, um, okay. So yes, splitting. Somebody said we can split a, uh, a list. Well, sort of, yes, you can, but it's already split, right? You have different items of the li list separate. It's not a string. It's not really super combined. There was another operation we, which we could do. We could slice. Slice? Yeah, we take a slice out of, out of it. You, don't, you take a slice of bread, which is already sliced, but you can actually take another slice. So if we wa I want the first two items... What would I do? Uh huh. I said colon and two. Two? 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 Three? 
Do you want to try? Do you want to try? Let's let's try with two. We only have two choices, so we can do it. Aha! I wanted everything. So if if I want, yeah, it's so weird. It should be two here, two print up to C, but for some reason, somebody wanted this in Python that if you want to access the first three items, you say zero and four. If you want to access the first two items, you say zero and three. I don't know why. Makes no sense to me. Yep. Right, but I specify the indexes, positions. I want po up to from position zero to position two, but I have to say three for that. Yeah, but start counting like one, two, three. Yeah, exactly. I know it's so weird. Yeah. Let's not go into that. Let's file a complaint with Python. Okay, there's another shortcut. If I want to get something, I mean, I want to take a slice starting from position zero and all the way up to the end. I don't want to put a number in there. I can actually do this. This is a shortcut in Python. It's so amazing. Yeah. How much? I, so I, I don't know, like from right side, like from end till I want, like like last. From the first two, some character. Like last two characters. Something like last two characters, sure. I uh, will go come to that. Um, for instance, I want from the starting position. I don't want to put a zero there, and uh, after two, which will give me a and a only a only no, a, and a and B. Yeah, A and B. Okay, good. To answer your question, I want the last two characters. So think about this. We started counting from, for, if you're Python, you were, given, you were given two numbers, start from zero, go up till three. And, but, you know, somebody wants, I, hey, I want the last two characters. So what you really want is from the end, you come back two, two steps, right? That position is sort of negative in a way, right? You're basically coming back. Let's see what happens. I, I don't fully remember if this should work. Minus two. No, actually, no, it doesn't work. Minus two and. Ooh. Oh, wait, 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 wait. See? Yes, thank you. I wanted from the last, I didn't say zero, zero was the first. So if I do wanna go back from zero, I wanna do a reverse. So that would start from the end of the string again. A negative number starts from the end of the string, keeps going backward, I say, I'm saying string, but remember it's a list too, works on lists. So starts from whatever that number is from in reverse order and up till what? I said nothing until the end. If I said up till two, what would that be? It's kind of hard to imagine. <laughs> you basically start from the end, you go back two steps, and then you want up till the first two characters. Let's see, I, yeah, it's hard for me. <laughs> A and B. So up till two were A and B, and you started from what? B. Because you go, went back two steps from the end, which is C and then B. So that would be just B. But anyways, you get the idea, right? See, th these are the fun things that you can do in Python. In other languages, it's a pain. It is a pain. Anyways, moving on. Uh, we have lists. What if I want to add something to a list? We did not discuss that. So let's do that. We have two lists. One is ARR and one is hello. I want to add two lists. See if this works. Let's see. Hmm, it does work. Interesting. For those coming from Java or C, this is not possible in C or Java. Do you know exactly why? Type. Those are type safe, type dependent, yes. Strongly typed languages. In a variable cannot hold two types of data in C or Java. There are shortcuts, there are ways to do that, but generally you can. In Python, you can. Python is uh, not type safe or, I wouldn't say type safe. It's not strongly typed, so type does not matter. You can put anything in a variable. That's cool, I, I really love that in Python. Really makes programming easier. Anyways, so there, 
I can add stuff, but what if I want to add D to this ARR list? I can do append. What does append do? Add something at the end of the list. Let's try it. Oh wait, I, ma I made a mistake. I want to add B. Actually, I can just do that. Oh, never mind. Okay. Bingo. I can actually add more things there. I can add a list at the end of another list. Oh, I actually inserted a list in a list. So I can have a list inside another list. That's, I guess, good. Sometimes you do that. Uh, okay, we're done with lists so far. There's another data type in Python. It's called a dictionary. Yes, I know. I like that name. I, w I love that name. I was like, dictionary, wow. What does that mean? So what do you have in normal dictionaries in English? You have word to, and a meaning, right? Like that. Sure. Is that how what a dictionary looks like? And you have a collection of those. Word meaning, blah, or in, in computer science, we like to use foobar. I don't know why. Or hot and cold I don't know this is weird weird English crazy English hot means cold okay if I want to represent this information in Python as a dictionary I can I'm using di di just so let's just do di remember lists were surrounded by what square brackets Dictionaries are surrounded by curly brackets. And I can say word meaning. And let's print it out or print word meaning. I can add more things to it later on. We'll do it later on. Um, I can have more things in there. Hot means cold in our world for some reason. Not funny, I know. Okay. Hot means cold, word means meaning. Does this make sense? Now, it, it is called a dictionary, but individual things, so this was, this part of the dictionary, I mean, this, this first thing before the column is usually called word, but in Python we call it a key a key and this is called a value for a particular key there is a value so dictionary is nothing but a collection of keys and values mm. so far so good too complicated not too complicated good good so far alhamdulillah um there are operations which we can perform on dictionaries we can find out what the keys are. So we want to find the keys on DI, which is a dictionary. I would just type in keys. Keys is a function which can be applied on a dictionary variable. It gives me basically a list of, let me just print it out because this is horrible, horrible. <sighs> Never mind. It should be, it's supposed to be just this part. It gives me a list of keys in there. We had two, right? If I want to find out all of the values in there, just the values, not the keys, I can do that. Cold and meaning, of course. But uh, we can only do the, just this. What's the point of a dictionary anyways? Two steps. This? Oh, oh, oh. Come on, Windows. Okay. Now, for lists, we could access different elements. For dictionaries, yes. So, um, to find the meaning of a word, you just draw on the word and then you just put the value. How did you know? 
You're absolutely correct. That's how we access a key, a basically a meaning in a dictionary. That's exactly what we do. I was coming to that. Thank you. So uh, for list, what we do, if we wanted to access a particular item, we provided the position of that item, right? In dictionary, since we don't really have this concept of positions, we have a concept of words and keys and values. Let's not call them words and meanings, keys and values. So if I want to access the value of a particular key, I do what exactly? Very much like key uh, lists, but in case of a, in, in place of a position, I would write the key instead. Bingo. Let's try another. That is cold. What about hello? What should happen? Thoughts, ideas. What should happen? Yes. Uh, invalid syntax. Invalid syntax. Yeah. No, this is not in. Well, technically, there should be some problem. Yes, that's absolutely correct. There should be some problem because hello does not exist as a key in this dictionary, mm -hmm. right? But it is valid syntax. Why is it valid syntax? This is a, an acceptable way of telling this programming language or Python interpreter to do something. Yeah. So it's proper syntax, but this does not exist. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That we will find out. That's absolutely correct. I think it should say, yeah, key error. It says I don't have this key. This is another way of saying I don't have this key. Key error. Hello does not exist. All right. What if, what if I want to add, add hello to it? For lists, we use lists. We use the append function to add something to the, to the list. For dictionaries, we don't need a function. We just say that we treat individual key value pair as a variable. So hello could be world. Hello means world in, in this. Let's print out di then see what happens. Hello means word. Now it's added to the dictionary. Yes. Uh, so could you have multiple dictionaries where you could uh, access the key mm -hmm. uh, independently? Right, yes. For instance, you have a Spanish dictionary, an English dictionary. That's what you're saying? Is that what you're saying? Okay. Yes, we can. So DI was one dictionary. We could have SI, another dictionary, which would have high equals to by. I don't know, weird dictionary. My weird dictionary is way upside down. So yes, we have DI, we have SI, two different dictionaries. Now, the, an interesting question should be, can I have dictionaries inside a dictionary? Thoughts, ideas, can I? No. Yes. 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 No? Yeah. Do you want to try? Sure. sure. Try. DI? Another dictionary equals to SI. So I'm assigning, I have a key in a dictionary which is called another dictionary and the value is another dictionary, SI. Boom, let's see. Aha, uh aha. -huh. Uh -huh. We can have a dictionary inside a dictionary. Whoa, that's amazing, right? I don't know for you, but for me, it's actually pretty cool. So you can have a dictionary inside another dictionary, and you can have another can have another dictionary inside that dictionary. Yes. How do you add words into a dictionary? We we did that before. How do you do that? We did that before. So we could say Python equals to cool. Cool. So we added a word to a dictionary. What happens if I do this? Another dictionary. Ah, oh, why did I choose this name? So that's a dictionary. It's a variable again. Can I access an element inside this dictionary? To access an element, oh, sorry, a key value pair inside a dictionary. We just put the key inside square brackets. Now this entire thing is another dictionary. Can we access any key value pair inside the dictionary? Can we? Can we? Thoughts, ideas? 
Yes. Come on, it's a yes or no. Yes or no. Yes. 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 No. Yes. Yes. No. yes. Okay. Do you want to try? Okay, let's try it. How did we access a dictionary? We put the key inside what? Square brackets? Let's do that. Yes, we can. We definitely can. Why we? Why can we? Because di and other dictionary. This entire thing is what? Another dictionary. Does that make sense? You're just saying yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Do we all understand this? This is a very important concept. This is a very important concept. It comes in handy. Uh, in other languages, we call it a nested. We call it multi-dimensional arrays or something. Oof, that's a mouthful. Anyways, so you can have a dictionary inside another dictionary, and you can access that dictionary's elements inside another dictionary. That's so puzzling. Anyways, yes, you can definitely, and you can add more elements into it. Sure. Jazakallah. Okay. We don't have enough time. All right. Using print format, formatting will be false. User input. All right, we, we, they, that's, this ends the data types. We are done with data types. We learned numbers, strings, lists, and dictionaries. That's good, and Booleans as well. So let's do we, let's write some program. Because we want to write some program. Let me see, I made some notes. Okay. Python grades. Let me do names. Grades. Hi. Oh, oh, it does not exist. Sorry. Should be not by that. I have to write the code for first. Yes, sir. I need to create a file. Okay. <laughs> what I want to do is have a list of names and their grades and people's grades. So this is for students. What I would do is students equals to I'll create a dictionary with let me create an empty dictionary first. Like this, you can create a, an empty dictionary which has no key or elements in it, key or values in it to access particular or enter another number in it or key in it. Amar has a grade of 80. I didn't work too hard, didn't get a hundred. Yes, students, no, not students. All right, give me a name. Jack. Ja no, Jack, I don't know, Muslim names, Ahmed, let's do Ahmed. All right, 10. Why, Ahmed, why, why? <laughs> let's do Ali. Zero? Zero? Ah. Huh? Zero percent of one? Zero for Suleiman. Suleiman. No, bu bad, bad idea. Buribat. Buribat in Urdu. That's what I would say. Uh, okay. Let's do that. So let's make it readable. We, we have a dictionary. We added some ele elements in it. Key value pairs. And we can do a print for the entire dictionary. Or we could find out, say, Ahmed's numbers. Ahmed's grade. Keys and values can be different data types. Okay. Yes, that's what we did before. It could be numbers, strings, another dictionary. You can do that too. You can have a dictionary as a key as well. How interesting is that? Uh, remember, uh, when you filter out the dictionary, the value for the key, another dictionary was a dictionary. But you can have dictionary as a key as well. Which is mind blowing for me. Anyways, let's not do that because it's so confusing. Oh, let me print out students. Ali, for some reason I'll start with A's. And let's save that. And do what? This is a simple program. Let's do Python names grades.py. Press enter. Okay. Yikes. It says 10 zero. 
I don't like this program. It should print out names too, right? It should print out names as well. So, how do we, so I want to print out name and the grade. So I want to print out Ahmad and students of Ahmad. So what I'm trying to do is join two things together. I should probably do this. Okay. Any ideas what should happen? I think they should have something like this there. Mm -hmm. Do you think I should get something like this? Yeah. I think so. Uh huh. Yeah. Are you very sure? Are you all very sure? Yeah. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Let's see what happens. I saved it. Oops, no, sorry, my bad. It's not notepad, it's Python. Aha! Uh -huh. Cannot convert an integer object to string implicitly. I don't know who came up with that language. It's so hard to understand. What it basically means is that this is a number. This is a what? Plural. String. Okay. We could join two strings together. Can we join two numbers together? Yes, we add them. That's what they call, what join really means for numbers. What does it mean to add a string to a number? Nothing. Yes. Louder, I cannot hear you. Can you put students after the two strings? Ahmed is already a string. No, 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 students after. Oh, yeah, that. Yes, I can. I certainly can. Absolutely correct. Thank you. Jazakallah khair. So the idea is what this brother, young brother said. Can we make this part a string because it complained? Python is such a complainer. It said I cannot, this is an integer, I cannot do, convert it into a string. Okay, okay, take it easy. We will convert it to a string so that it's compatible with the other string so they can be concatenated. The way to do that is to type in str. Remember functions? str is an inbuilt Python function which makes whatever you give it a string. Okay, I saved it. Let's try it out again. Alhamdulillah. Now it works fine. Okay. Now. What? Sorry, what? Could? Sure. STR. Okay. What if I wanted to ask the user? Tell me the name of the student who you want the grade of. You want to see the grade of. Okay. So I want to find out the grade of Ali, but I don't want to write it in the code. I want to ask the user, <coughs> tell me the name of the student who, whom grade you want to see. Let's just comment, the, comment this out. Let's delete this for now. In Python, if you put this hash function, oh sorry, number, sorry, character, it makes it a comment. Basically, the Python, Python ignores it. This we usually use to write comments in, the, in your code, to explain things to ourselves. Okay, here I can write a comment saying that, okay, this, this part of code is for, you know, uh, keep, wait, sorry, assign name grades to names. I'm just adding this for myself later on. If I forget what this part of code did, I put a note in there. So I converted it in this to th this these two lines to a note or a comment. So Python will basically it basically ignore this. So I want to ask the user, tell me the name of the student for whom you want to print out the grade. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Okay. I will see. We'll see. Just hold on for for a moment. I can ask a user for some text by using this function. It's called raw input. And this would ask the user, and whatever the user enters, we can store it in a variable. 
Let's call it ST for now. ST is for student, short, just short. Uh, uh, we'll cover that later. <laughs> we'll cover that later. Raw input would ask the user. Let's see what this does. We could have just did this in Python instead. Never mind. Oh, raw input is not defined? Oh, I think Python 3 does not have raw input. Thank you. Just do input. Hmm. What is that? Oh, okay. So it did ask me, but it did not tell me what to enter. So we need to we need to show something to the user. How do we do things? How how do we do that? Show something to the user. You, we use a command called what? Print. Print. Yes. And enter a name. And we do that. So. Write a comment as user for student name. My comments are, are longer than the code itself. Enter a name. Did I say enter a name? Yeah, okay. Homer. And that's it. Did I do anything with the name? I didn't do anything, right? I stored it in whatever user entered. I stored it in ST. But I did not do anything with it. We need to what? do what exactly? We need to print out the grade for the name of the student that the user entered. Oof, that's a long sentence. But anyways, let's reuse this part of co this code. We'll do another print. Now we have the name of the student inside what variable? ST, right? So instead of Ahmed, we can do ST. Does this make sense? Does this make sense? Confusions? Kind of? Okay. So ST holds a string or something, whatever user entered. I enter, I as a user entered Amr, A-M-E-R, Amr. Okay. ST, this, if I do this, I supply the name of the list, sorry, dictionary, and I surround ST with uh, square brackets. It's going to access the word, the key, <coughs> Uh, key in ST inside that dictionary. Students ST. Now that would be if I enter Amr, that would become this, right? For Python, it means this. Does that make sense? ST is replaced by what I entered. I would enter actually. So that would become ST. Students of ST would be my grade, right? But I need to print my name as well. So I'll do that. Name colon space and then the grade okay I saved it I hope I saved it enter name I was about to make a mistake okay so far so good man nobody's excited we got a user input that was something very good for me never mind yes go back to code okay do you guys need a break Please have a five minute break. <laughs> so what? Yes, yes, yes. You need to come Okay. I am by. That's it? Okay, go back. Go back.
Yes. Dictionary, insider dictionary. Oh, so there should be SI somewhere. Yeah, here we go. I buy DI and then DI and other dictionary is SI. So far, Python is easy. Yeah. <laughs> Just a heads up. After this, we're going to do conditions and loops. If this, then do do that. Or if you guys want, we can end here, and if you want the rest, we can do it next week, inshallah. Does that does that work for everybody? Um, we can stop here because I think this is enough for today, and we can continue next week. Does that work for everyone? Okay, alhamdulillah. Maghrib, uh, it could be some people have to go. That's fine, and it's about five twenty-three. So next week we can start from. Yeah, the sisters agree actually unanimously. Do we have a unanimous agreement that we can continue this next week? Yeah. Who has a problem? <laughs> what? Okay. Okay, no, no. Who has a problem with coming here next week? Nobody. You know, I I had a professor. What he would use, to, what he would do is, he would say, I will extend the due date. If nobody disagrees, <laughs> and there's always that one person, I disagree. <laughs> and he would say, since that person said so, no extension. And there would always be something. I think he paid him or something. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe gave him some extra bonus or something. Has to be something. We hated that person. We hated that person. Alhamdulillah. But inshallah, we'll continue next week. Uh, go home. Try to do this. I'll email you the recording of this. I'll email you. There are only two or three code files. Inshallah, we'll continue next week. From We'll do conditions, loops, working with file input and output, and uh, functions, gonna, modules, you, classes, fun stuff, inshallah. Are you going to review what we learned? Yes, inshallah, I will. Yeah. Python.org. That's for language, but not this, all of this stuff. Okay. I just made all everything up. I'm good at that. Good at that. <laughs> That's enough. Yes. Yes. Let me start stop recording. Inshallah.